Steve here. Welcome back to another edition of Big Barb Guns. I had some comments from people when I did the 460 video, wanting to see how well a 454 Casul performed. Now the 454 Casul is actually one of my favorite cartridges. Let me show you the cartridges here. This is an Underwood 454 Casul. Now it's slightly longer than a 45 Long Colt, but shorter than a 460 Magnum. It's one of my favorite rounds to shoot. The 454 Casul is capable of taking out any game in North America, and probably most of them as well in Africa, if it's placed properly. So some of those questions have been around, how does barrel length affect a 454 Casul? I think you do get the optimal power out of a 454 using a rifle or a longer barrel, but let's go ahead and test that today. We're going to go out and take a look at the ballistics using two different firearms. First, we'll use this Rossi 454 Casul rifle. It should give you the maximum velocity out of a 454 Casul. It'll be interesting to see the difference. The second firearm I'll use will be this. This is the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum, which I have reviewed before. It will shoot 454 Casul, which I have shot in this gun as well. It does have quite a bit of kick using certain 454 Casul cartridges. This particular firearm has a 5-inch barrel. If you take away the compensator here, it's actually about a 4-inch barrel. So we'll be comparing, really, a 4-inch barrel and a 20-inch barrel. And see how the ballistics differ between these two guns. So now we'll head to the range. We'll take some shots using a 454 Casul in both this 4-inch barrel and in the 20-inch barrel. And we'll see how the different bullets perform. Well, I'm back from the range now. Let's look at the results from using these different barrel links and different ammo. So the three different cartridges you're going to see shortly are these three. First is the Underwood 454 Casul. This is a jacketed hollow point XTP, 300 grains, and it's rated at 1,650 feet per second. The next cartridge I used was this Magtech. This is a 260 grain semi-jacketed soft point with a flat tip. And lastly, which really surprised me, was the performance of these. This is the double tap 335 grain hard cast solid point. This was a very hard hitting round. So watch these shots now. You're going to see the results on the chronograph, and then we'll talk about each of them and finish up this video. <laughs> Those were some pretty surprising results. I did expect there to be a difference in the velocity between each of the cartridges, but I didn't think it would be that significant. What was even more surprising was the amount of energy produced by the different barrel length. Let's take a look at the averages on each of these cartridges and the foot-pounds of energy they produced. So first off will be the Underwood. So the Underwood jacketed hollow point with 300 grains had an average velocity of 1,448 feet per second. Foot-pounds of energy was 1,397 foot-pounds of energy. That is a lot of energy. Let's take it up a step now. 
With a 20-inch barrel, we averaged a velocity of 1,881 feet per second with 2,357 foot-pounds of energy. Now that is a very hot round. Between these two barrel lengths, we had an average loss of 433 feet per second and an energy loss of 960 foot-pounds of energy. Now that really surprises me. That is a significant loss in power from this cartridge. Now let's take a look at the MagTech. Being a lighter cartridge, I really expected to get a lot more velocity out of it. However, from a 4-inch barrel, it actually decreased in velocity. And that's probably because the bullet's traveling so fast, it can't generate enough energy inside a 4-inch barrel. The average velocity out of the MagTech was 1,454 feet per second, producing 1,220 foot-pounds of energy. So that's lighter than the Underwood. So that's a little bit less energy than you had from the Underwood cartridge, which I didn't expect. With the MagTech, however, on a longer barrel, well, things changed. We had an average velocity of 2,019 feet per second, and the muzzle energy was 2,353, which is right there next to the Underwood cartridge. With this cartridge, we lost 565 feet per second based on the barrel length, and there was significant energy loss at 1,133 foot-pounds of energy. Now that is very, very significant. And the last cartridge was the double tap at 335 grains. That's a pretty heavy bullet coming out of a 454. The average velocity was 1,537 feet per second on the 4-inch barrel. And on the 20-inch barrel, we had an average of 1,918 feet per second. As far as foot-pounds of energy, on the 4-inch barrel, we had 1,757. And on the 20-inch barrel, we had a surprising 2,736 foot-pounds of energy. That is a lot of energy coming out of the front of that barrel. Between the barrel lengths, we had a loss of velocity of 381 feet per second and an energy loss of 979 foot-pounds of energy. Now, the energy difference between the barrel lengths is significant. And with a 1,000 foot-pounds of energy lost, well, that's a great deal of loss. However, when you look at a 4-inch barrel with this amount of energy, it's still a very powerful round. There wouldn't be too many concerns using this double-tap hard cast round with 1,757 foot-pounds of energy. I'd feel really safe in the woods as long as I was confident with the aim I had on whatever critter is coming after me. I hope this answers the questions you might have had on the 454 Casul and how it performed. If you do have any comments or questions about the 454 Casul, please leave them below. I appreciate everyone that takes the time to comment. Share your experiences also. I really like hearing back from you. If you found this content helpful and you take the time to like or subscribe, that'd also really be a great benefit. Well, until next time, we'll see you again on Big Board Guns.